ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the EU Non-Proliferation Consortium, I welcome all participants to this conference. You are all participants. Nobody is here just as an observer, and we, uh, I don't have to uh, encourage you to uh, participate actively. But when you do participate, I ask that you do so with uh, a conciseness because of the large number of participants, uh, we would like everyone to have a chance. There are over 200 uh, of you are uh, signed up for the conference. Uh, we had a couple cancellations at the last minute because of snow and ice in Turkey and in Northern Italy. Um, but I'm glad that all the rest of you were able to come to Brussels to enjoy the sunshine. I will introduce our distinguished uh, speaker welcoming you from the European Union in a minute, but before doing so, uh, please allow me to make a couple of introductory remarks. As you know, this conference is brought to you by the EU Non-Proliferation Consortium, a group that was formed uh, a year ago by four think tanks in Europe, uh, which have special uh, expertise in non-proliferation and disarmament subjects. La Fondation pour la Recherche Stratégique in Paris, the Peace Research Institute Frankfurt, the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, and my own International Institute for Strategic Studies based in London, uh, which had the lead in organizing today's conference. The consortium forms the core of a wider network of European think tanks and academic institutions that are engaged in research on non-proliferation and disarmament matters. This wider network now comprises 51 centers of research in Europe, all of which I think are represented uh, here today. The purpose of the consortium and of the broader network of, uh, of institutes is to promote discussion of non-proliferation and arms control issues, to support the non-proliferation work of the uh, European Union, including by offering advice to promote the work that the EU and the institutes are doing in the field and to strengthen uh, the bonds among us. The European External Action Service and the consortium worked together uh, to organize a kickoff meeting in Brussels last May and just a couple months later organized a successful EU seminar to promote confidence building and in support of a process aimed at establishing a zone free of WMD and means of delivery in the Middle East. These meetings uh, both went off very well, and we are being asked if uh, we as a consortium can't do uh, even more to promote the uh, WMD free zone um, proposals. The consortium has also developed a dedicated website, which can be found at www.nonproliferation.eu. Uh, Plus, we have developed a growing body of policy-oriented publications, including papers commissioned uh, by the consortium, all of which are found on the website, and some samples are outside. All uh, discussions uh, for the next two days are on the record, um, except those uh, conducted uh, during coffee breaks and during the meals, and I hope you do continue the discussions during those occasions. All of the conference sessions are being recorded so that we can prepare transcripts of the discussion to post on the website and circulate. We will also be posting video highlights and uh, uh, photographs of the conference, which will also be on the web page. The web page uh, features as well uh, blog posts. Uh, there will also be real-time commentary on Twitter during this conference. I don't know myself how it works, but um, I'm told that if you follow at IISS uh, underscore org, uh, you will get the tweets. Or if you want to tweet yourself, if you add uh, slash mark EU non prolif, slash mark EU non -pro prolif. Okay. Now, now for the, uh, the real welcoming remarks, uh, I turn the floor over to Ambassador. Uh, Maciej uh, Papowski, the Deputy Secretary General of the European External Action Service. 
who came to the EU in 2008 from a distinguished career in the Polish diplomatic service. Our policy at this conference is to refer participants to the short bios in the conference packets you all have. So I will, uh, with apologies, not uh, uh, give the usual um, uh, introduction to our distinguished uh, uh, speaker, but without further ado, turn this uh, floor over to Ambassador Popowski and thank him for kicking off the conference. Thank you, thank you, Martin. Thank you for sparing the details of my CV. Um, good morning, um, Excellencies, ladies uh, and gentlemen. It's my turn and my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the European External Action Service in, in Brussels um, at this conference organized by the EU Non-Proliferation Consortium. We are very grateful for the great cooperation that we've already managed to, to develop. So let me offer you some uh, initial thoughts before you start the real work. As um, I'm sure you know, uh, uh, Brussels is not that far away from the city of Ypres. So it's a, an about an hour's drive. Um, and for anyone who, uh, whatever reason, has difficulty in understanding the time, energy, and zeal put into disarmament and non-proliferation, um, and I assume there are not so many of uh, them in the room, um, I do recommend a visit to, to Ypres. Visiting the sites of the Great War that ravaged the area almost a century ago, um, including through massive use of chemical weapons, is certainly an eye-opener. And there are many cities like that throughout Europe that are indeed many throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2010, the EU Council decided to create a network bringing together foreign policy institutions and research centers from across the EU to encourage political and security-related dialogue and debate on measures to combat the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and the delivery systems. Less than a year later, the EU Non-Proliferation Consortium is doing well, has developed a dedicated website, as uh, we were told by Mark, and produced a series of policy-oriented publications. Um, so I would once again would like to thank uh, publicly the four institutes that manage jointly the consortium, forms the core of a wider network of uh, European independent think tanks and academic institutions that are engaged in research on non-proliferation and disarmament matters. In our open democracies, this contribution of independent think tanks is, is key. Our aim today and uh, tomorrow is to openly discuss among experts from both uh, official institutions, government, uh, and uh, the academic world. Our agenda spans all aspects of non-proliferation, all relevant weapons disciplines, nuclear, chemical, biological, missiles, small arms and light weapons, as well as nuclear security and uh, proliferation-related crime. So it is a very ambitious undertaking. Before discussing uh, such a wide variety of issues, let me briefly emphasize the basics. So the guiding principle and the overall aim uh, of the European Union in the field of non-proliferation is the promotion of universality of international treaties, conventions and other instruments, and their national implementation. We do this because the threats from weapons of mass destruction and proliferation remain as valid as when the Union produced its first collective strategic document on security, the European Security Strategy of 2003. Take the case of the present situation in Libya, uh, what massive presence of weapons following conflict that concerns, uh, the concerns about arms stocks gone missing and yet another demonstration um, of this threat. So would we do this work through a variety of means. Within the EU, um, uh, one should always start by putting one's, homes, uh, one, one's uh, own uh, house in order. There is a key regulatory work, such as the strengthening of the dual export um, regime. Another is funding, for instance, our contribution to the Nuclear Security Fund, where the EU is a key donor. We also do a fair amount of technical support and expertise, for instance, through the European Commission's Cooperative Support Program, uh, which last year celebrated its 30th uh, anniversary. Of course, there are many linkages to other policy areas, such as trade. And diplomacy is clearly part of the picture. Through mainstreaming, the work on the promotion of stable international and regional environments, uh, and through a variety of concrete tools, demarches, statements, high-level context, conferences, visits, etc. 
This sometimes includes sanctions. It often includes diplomacy at the highest level. For instance, the High Representative Cathy Ashton, on behalf of the um, international community, um, um, has followed a sustained um, approach in leading the efforts to engage Iran in a process that would build confidence as the exclusively peaceful uh, nature of its uh, uh, nuclear program. For now, the accelerating expansion of the Iranian enrichment program and the IAEA findings about Iranian activities relating to military nuclear technology remain a source of increasing concern. It's likely to remain at the top of the agenda this year. Other key challenges for our work in 2012, without wanting to be exhaustive, include the start of the NPT review process, the arms trade treaty negotiation, the process leading to the establishment of a zone free of uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction in the Middle East, and the review conference on the UN program of action on small arms and light weapons. The method of our daily work remains grounded in the belief in effective multilateralism, providing the legal and normative basis for all non-proliferation efforts. Also, close cooperation with partners is crucial for the success of our common efforts. It is on this note of partnership that I would like to end. Your relation with research institutes of all the countries in the world, for instance, is essential. We count on you not only to give us innovative input, input, but also to involve in this exercise important think tanks of third countries. We need allies. This is a point where the synergy uh, between the European External Action Service and the EU network of think tanks will be very helpful. I'm pleased to welcome today representatives from many research institutes and governments outside the European Union, just as I welcome the many participants from within the EU. So I thank you for your attention. I wish you a very successful and productive conference. Thank you very much.